Welcome back my friends. What have we got here? Well here we've got a Remington rifle, a 788 to be precise. So let's take a look at it. First things first, chamber's empty, <clears throat> the rifle is safe to handle. Okay, 788, well what on earth is that? Well the 788 is a rifle that was produced by Remington as an economy rifle, uh, a less expensive uh, rifle to buy and it ran alongside the Model 700 for a few years. Model 700 came out I believe in 1962 and was designed to be the premium rifle. This came out in 67 and was designed to be a less expensive uh, rifle and they continued producing it until about 84. This one, uh, judging by the serial number, is a 1980 model. Now, uh, it's quite a plain rifle, there's no checkering, and it's an original form. It would have had a honey or a custard colored uh, varnished stock, which I didn't find very attractive. And in actual fact, I didn't pay an awful lot for this rifle because it was in uh, quite poor condition, or the stock was. There's a lot of water damage at this end. And so I stripped it and I dyed the stock with a red walnut dye. Now, the wood isn't walnut, it's a sort of a, I think it's birch. It might be beach, I don't know, but anyway, it didn't take the stain very well and I had a terrible job. I had to do it several times to try to get the stain to go in and in places it didn't. Uh, so it kind of gave it a, a fiddle back or a tiger stripe finish, if you like. I believe this side is more attractive than the other. And it's not a bad looking rifle, but um, by no means a premium rifle. Um, yeah, when I'd, um, when I dyed the stock, I, uh, I then put true oil on. Now, true oil, to my mind, is not an oil, it's a varnish. But in this case, it, it worked good because I didn't think the linseed oil would go into the wood very well, especially areas like this. So the true oil sort of covered everything and, um, and put a seal to it. Anyways, back to the rifle. Now then, what's all this about? Well, this rifle is a rear locker. There are no locking lugs at the front of the bolt. The front of the bolt is plain and it locks at the rear, which ordinarily would make for a weak action and a very inaccurate rifle. But I think Remington's thinking was that they were producing a a 22 rimfire with a rear locker very similar to this. I believe there was only two rows of locking lugs instead of three. And um, and I think they wanted to have a commonality of parts in, in some way. Maybe the trigger two, I don't know. I believe that series was the 580 series. Um, man, I don't know because I don't have one of those on hand to be able to compare. But I believe that was their thinking to utilize the rear locker on this rifle as well as the uh, the 22. So we're looking at a rear locker, inaccurate. No, in actual fact, this is a very accurate rifle and Remington sort of surprised themselves, I believe. And this rifle model was very popular with bench rest shooters at the time. And uh, many of them built custom guns based on this action in preference to the 700 model. And why? Well, really it's to do with the amount of steel in this area here. If you look, the, uh, the action is, is a very much a closed action. The, the port for loading and ejection is very, is very small compared to the rest of it. Rather like a Tika, the modern Tikas anyway. And also we've got the uh, the barrel is threaded a long ways in here and we've got this massive nut 
which which acts as a recoil lug too. So we're looking at a lot of steel in this area, which is very, very rigid, coupled with a free floated quality barrel, makes for a very accurate rifle. Originally she would have had um, uh, iron sights, they have long gone. They weren't on the rifle when I bought it. And uh, I think they were plastic as well, so they weren't a lot of uh, a lot of use. I think Remington realized that most people would take them off anyway. Okay, so this rifle is a 243, which uh, 243 is a very fast round, and there's a crossover round from uh, varmint hunting into uh, small to medium game. So you could shoot anything with this, you know, from prairie dogs up to uh, mule deer you could probably take uh, an elk or a moose with it as well if you if you could put the shot in the right in the right area um, okay so let's take a look at this bolt now the way to get the bolt out is to push the safety forward and then slide her back and it pops right out that's one of the criticisms of this rifle was the bolt is very easy to get out and it, it might pop out on you when you're hunting. Uh, so that's a thing to bear in mind. Um, I believe that some people change out the trigger for a Timney, which I've heard is a better trigger. And I think that overcomes the, uh, the safety issue, but I, I'm not sure about that. I don't find it a problem. Uh, but some other people would. Now, if we look at the bolt, we can see that uh, we've got three sets of locking lugs of three each, which means that we get a very short bolt throw. We don't have to lift it up 90 degrees like we would with a Mauser or something like that. And the end of the bolt is very reminiscent of the 700 and Howers and rifles like that. We've got an extractor clip there spring loaded which the which pops over the uh, the end of the cartridge and we've got a spring loaded plunger for an ejector um, the bolt is very easy to strip down if you see that hole there you just push a thin pin in there all the way through and then you can unscrew it take the firing pin out very easy to do. Um, the bolt itself, excuse me, I'm working one-handed. The bolt itself is not not very not altogether smooth. It's okay to about here, and then it gets floppy, which. Uh, which you know is a, is a criticism but it also happens on the teachers and people love the teachers and I don't know why because I'm not particularly fond of teachers but anyway so she's not a precision fit and I think it's a cock on closing yeah so uh, bolts a bit clunky but if you work it fast you won't notice a box magazine um so that's that's kind of handy uh you can see it's written in 243 winchester i have two uh two magazines there you go, 243 now i've color coded them so that if i decide i want to i can have cartridges with two weights of bullet I'm going out hunting for uh, a deer and there's a bunch of coyotes a long ways off I can have a coyote um, round in here um, yes yeah, so let's talk about uh, talk about the cartridges well you can use uh, the high quality federal premiums with uh, 100 grain nozzle partitions, which nozzle partitions are my bullet of choice. They're very effective. I've never, ever had a problem with them. 
Uh, you hit a deer with these in the heart and lung area. It's going to go down without a question. Never had one explode. And nozzle partitions, I've always found them perfectly expanded right against the skin on the far side of a, head and lung, of a heart and lung shot. You've also got the option of um, 100 grain um, soft points if you want to go for a, a cheaper a cheaper um, cartridge. So yeah, so if we look at the bullets available, we can start out at the lower range with a 58 grain. It's rattling out the barrel at about 30 on. 3,800 feet per second, which is fairly motoring. So these are your your varmint rounds, and then you're getting up into your your coyote type rounds, and we're looking at say something here that's doing 33, 3,300, 33. So that's quite fast, and then when we get onto our deer, deer rounds, oops, 100 grains, we're looking at 28, 2900, so that's going fairly fast. And what does it say this one is? Yeah, 2850 at the muzzle. Bullet drop at 200 yards is 3.6 inches. So yeah, very effective round against deer. Reasonably light recoiling. I bought this rifle for my daughter to use, thinking it would be a very light recoiling rifle, but I don't find it so. Maybe I'm I'm kind of weird, but it, um, it it's not it's not like shooting a twenty two. It's it's got a bit of punch to it. Um, scope. Now, when I got this rifle, it had this scope on it, which is um, a Tasco 2.5 to 10, cheap and cheerful. And the actual fact, these are a very good scope. They're a budget scope, but they're very good. They're quite heavy, clunky, made in China, unfortunately. Um, but with this rifle, there's a problem. This um, loading port is very narrow and it tends to throw cartridges up and i was having a problem with cartridges getting stuck between there and there on this turret because these turrets are quite tall you see um and the the previous owner had solved the problem by turning the scope over and i thought well this guy doesn't know what he's doing so i turned it back but in actual fact he was right and i was wrong because um if you put the if you put the scope on that way, then the car the spent cartridges won't get stuck. But I found it <laughs> it was doing my head in trying to work out which to adjust when the scope was over there. So I looked for another scope and I managed to find this one, which is a Bushnell Scope Chief Six. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Which uh, back in the day was. Um, Bushnell's um, flagship scope. Let's say it was top of the line. Actually made by uh, Bushnell. Uh, sorry, Bush, not Bushnell. Um, Bosch and Lom. Bosch and Lom made these for Bushnell. Uh, Bushnell never made their own scopes. They had them made in various places. And um, but anyway, this was the top of the line. Um, when. Um, Bushnell bought Bosch and Lom, or vice versa, I'm not sure which. The uh, This line was dropped, and then the uh, the, uh, the elite line was uh, was started, uh, because they didn't want to directly compete against one another. But these scopes are very good, and it's age correct for this rifle. I like to keep my rifles with a scope that's um, of the same sort of period. So this one I think is a 4 to 12. It's slightly smaller. Turrets are definitely thinner. There are no ejection problems with this. High quality scope. And it fits reasonably low too. 
which is quite nice with the original fittings that were on this one. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, what else to say? Not an awful lot really. Um, like I say, this rifle was in a bit of a poor shape. The stock was, was, was quite poor. So I did a bit of work on it. Uh, it was well worth the price I paid for it, I believe. And it, and it shoots very well. Um, you know, so rifles like this, 788s, they, there is quite a demand for them these days. People uh, are sort of cluing into these, um, these older rifles. And uh, I have seen them make more money at gun shows than the, the Model 700s. So there we go. I uh, can't think of anything else to say other than uh, take care of yourselves, look after one another, enjoy your shooting, and I will talk to you next time. Goodbye.